Okay, welcome to Yegvishel's Shadow. I want to apologize. I tried to go live. I didn't understand a lot of it. So, I apologize for them. They was looking for that. I'm going to have to check that out. I really wanted to go live. Um, what I want to talk about tonight is altered states of consciousness. Why we achieve it, and is it even helpful or harmful to us? Uh, a lot of things have been happening, and just kind of led me to think about this. And what I want to talk about is the altered state of consciousness. What is it? What's the purpose for it? Well, to understand the purpose from it, for it, you have to look at it from a spiritualistic aspect. As we know, everything in the universe works off of frequency and vibration. And from the spiritualist practitioner and shamanic practitioner, there's no difference between the spirit realm or the realms of the gods or that they're all around us. We just don't see them. And the first question is, is people say, well, how can two things, how can two things live simultaneously? You're in the same space. Well, you're thinking in a physical world. Yes, that's true. You can't have two objects living in the same space. Uh, if you take a pool ball and shoot into the other pool ball, the other, they got to move. They're going to have a reaction. But if you think of a radio station, how many FM radio stations there are, how many AM radio stations there are, how many waves are going through the air, they're all occupying the same space, the same time, but they're on different frequencies. The same as light. You can take a white light, take a prism, and the rainbow comes out. They're in the same space, but they're just different light frequencies. There are some light frequencies we can see, some we can't. The same as sound. There's sound that's above the human ear, and there's sounds that are below it, but there's some animals that can pick up on it. So the reason to go to altered state of consciousness is within the brain I'm going to read this that way I won't get in any trouble Whenever in the brain we're an electromagnetic little machine there's I'm going to read this there's four different brain waves uh, the brain wave samples they have with dominant frequencies belonging to the beta, alpha, tetra, and delta, and gamma. Various regions of the brains do not admit the same brain wave frequency simultaneously. An EEG signal between electrodes placed on the scalp consists of many waves with different characteristics. The large amount of data received from even one single EEG recording makes interpretation difficult. The brainwave patterns are unique for each individual. And that's right here so I don't get in trouble. That's not me, that's a scientific thing. But the, the thing I want to pick up on is the brainwave patterns are unique for every individual. So in a spiritual sense, in order to, let's say, see high frequency beings or energies or use it, we have to get our brain to the high frequencies. If you have to want to speak to the lower, you have to get a certain part of your brain to the lower. And that's why some people may be born naturally to be able to see different energies, different beings, whatever you want to call, because their brain waves are matching the frequency that they're on. That's the basics of it, matching your brain. Now, why do we do it? Well, from a spiritual sense, you may want to do it to consult ancestors, gods, work with different deities, there's numerous reasons why you want to alter your state of consciousness. 
and what brought this to mind was most people think of a shaman or, or someone that does them type of practices as someone that gets high on the peyote buds and, and dances around the fire and screams and hollers and gets their brains in that frequency so they can do the travels they want. Um, I spoke on that before. If you don't understand it, I don't practice it. There's a religious way and a spiritual way to do that. But the key point is, is everyone, everyone's brain waves are uniquely different. So how do we achieve that? Well, I can tell you now, there's ways that I do it whenever I do a practice or take someone on a shamanic journey. I ask the spirit guides, I ask this, what, what is needed, what utensils and tools, and there's a mirror there's a whole bunch of stuff out there you know you can use the singing bowls the singing bowls are different tones different things and they say each note opens up certain energy centers and for just my own personal satisfaction i took the singing bowls and i would hit them and i had a frequency uh thing that would monitor the frequencies and let's say the, the note was supposed to be C if you watch that it would hit the C it would go a little higher or a little lower it might even hit a D and the frequency modulator would be all over the board so to me if you use that singing bowl and let's just say a certain area didn't they say in the books and what everybody says you see to open that up for you then that may help your brain waves that note trigger in your brain to that frequency now that explains why the frequency modulator would go maybe up and down up and down up and down up and down because each person is unique to their frequency. That's why I ask my spirit guides and, and, and helpers, what does this person need to achieve the goal? And that's done naturally. It's not done with drugs. Another way is there's chanting, there's uh, sweat lodges. People will go in there and read all, all or reach altered states by you know getting their temperature up in their body bringing it that and there's a lot of traditions that do that but they're also monitored by someone that knows what they're doing and how they're looking how long to leave that person in that environment but we just walking around sometimes hit the altered state of consciousness and we don't even think, and people don't even think they're doing it. It's called zoning out. Um, if you just, if you remember some of the old movies and stuff, there'd be a, an old man sitting on the front porch. He's doing nothing but whittling. And maybe that whittling gave his mind, his conscious mind, something to do. He would slow his breathing down, and next thing you know, he's thinking about things. Uh, my grandmother used to do the... Uh, doilies and little lace doilies she'd sit there for hours in her chair doing them and you could tell she was there but she, her mind was you know they say her mind's wandering all of a sudden she'd look down and she'd be pulling off half the doily because she missed a couple stitches here and there and we used to say well why don't you just leave it the way it is oh i don't mind it it just keeps my mind occupied i didn't understand it then it kept her mind occupied but her brain wavelengths was also changing at the same time. For me, I have a drum, and that drum to me is a living soul being, and that drum loves to go journeying, loves to take journeys. And drums, there are drum rhythms that people have used for thousands of years that it's proven with drum rhythms or chanting 
it automatically changes the frequency in your brain. So why do we want to do that change? The, the question is, why do we want to change it to begin with? Well, it can help relax you through meditation. There's different practices that they'll just sit there, no drugs. Practice breathing. Practice breathing in and out. That slows your heart rate. You clear your mind. So from the spiritual sense, that's the basics of why we enter altered states of consciousness. But I've seen, I'm going to say in the last while, the problem with the altered states of consciousness today, people don't even realize they're doing it or it's happening. I guess this all started me realizing this um, by a few people that have approached me. And again, this goes back to what we were talking about. Play, uh, pay attention to your body, and you'll be able to understand what your soul is trying to tell you. And in today's society, a big thing is marijuana. You know, I'm gonna. It's they want to legalize it. They want to do it. That's a mind-altering substance. Alcohol is a mind-altering substance. I know an individual that was, I'll use the word, didn't know how to handle his alcohol, liquor, and this and that. He just drank way too much, way too fast. And if you look at it, why do they say we're selling, you know, fine wines and spirits? Why? Why do they call them spirits? It's, you know, the alcohol. It's right there. Because it changes your brain waves. And I've seen this, and there's people that's witnessed it. You take someone that has drunk, drunk, has drunken themselves into a stupor, and I've known this more times than one. The one person, you know, would start talking in a weird language. Well, why? They might bark, how, why? Because their brain waves from the overuse of alcohol, this is from a spiritual point, has opened up the frequencies to the lower vibration energies. Pure and simple. That's the spiritual side of it. That's what's happened. There's people out there, they say, well, I'm just going to smoke some marijuana to relieve my anxiety. It helps my anxiety. I, I bet it does. Because why? It changes your brain waves. The problem isn't that the that what they want is the marijuana or the THC to get rid of their anxiety. And we, I spoke about this. If they would work on what caused their anxiety, they wouldn't need the marijuana. And if you take a, I'll say, shamanic practitioner years ago, well, they might have smoked their share of marijuana. I'm not going to say they haven't to reach that state. But the level of THC was probably minute compared to what it is today. You can go to the legalized marijuana shop and you get, I don't even know, THC levels way up. So maybe in a shamanic sense, they would take their little pipe, take a little couple hits off of it. The THC level was so low, but they knew that it would open up or maybe close a channel to allow another one to open up. Well, now all of a sudden you're dumping 500 times the normal THC in there, and they sit around and yeah, yeah, you know, they discuss things. You know, maybe we're maybe we're just uh, Adam on a giant's toenail. This whole system, you know, they'll discuss things on spiritual levels because it does open it up. But do they are they coherent and really understand? And what I'm going to say, I'm going to say this from the heart. I'm going to say this from the heart, and I really mean it. If you're on any medications, and that's a big thing today that's mind-altering, don't stop them. Um, you know, if you're prescribed them, stay with them. And I guess this is why I wanted to start this. This is a personal, personal part of my life, I guess you could say. I know 
you could get on the on the TV and they'll say take this drug and then they'll start rattling off the side effects and they'll say when you get on it you may have suicidal tendencies and when leaving it you may have suicidal tendencies and I'm scratching my head saying why would somebody want to take that that alters their brain waves to this frequency that makes you want to kill yourself and I know someone that that happened to it was a teenager this individual was going through their normal life adolescence hormones going up and down was having problems they took him to the doctor doctor prescribed him this drug to calm their brain down and one very long after that they found her okay she committed suicide that was a side effect. It was also said, don't give to children under 18 years old. And I'm asking myself, why would a doctor that wants to preserve life even let that thought cross their mind? You can get on the internet. I might get shut down for this. This is Jim Craker talking. Doctors receive money for writing prescriptions it doesn't matter they can get it for this drug that drug this drug or that drug it's a multi-billion dollar business and I ask myself why why I've seen an upsurge and people and this isn't directed to anyone this is just the facts there's a big thing out there, drug-induced psychosis. They have mental problems, I would say problems, emotional problems, whatever, so they start out with a spoken ear pot to do this, and it graduates to this, then, it, then the next thing you know, they're doing, they're up five days, six days doing this drug, up longer, messes their mental brain up. Some of them can have perfect, deep spiritual conversations. I can attest to that. Why? Because that part of their brain that opens up to the spiritual side is open. It's perfectly channeled open. It don't shut off. The next thing you know, they're seeing beings. Things are chasing them. I believe they are because they've opened that channel up. Well, then they go from self-induced drug-induced psychosis then they seek professional help and the doctor says okay we're gonna put you on this medication and this one and this one next time you see him I'm here to save your soul I'm Jesus Christ and they can talk about philosophy I've seen it, I can sit here and I can see the progression that it's happening, happened. I, 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 I've witnessed it. They start out by, oh, I'm so at peace and at calm. A couple, three days later, oh, I'm an angel. I've been sent here to help guide the world. And it goes on and on and on. And, and, and one individual was here to punish the ones that aren't right. And that's all because of the prescribed medication. And the doctors say, well, we just got to dial it in right. Well, I just read you there where everybody's brain waves length are uniquely to them. I don't know what brain wave needs opened up. I don't know what your soul is trying to do to you or want you to wants you to know. I don't know that at all. But the spirit realm knows. Your God, your guardian angels know. They know. So when I would I, I when I do my practice, I have a rug I set out. The person sets here. I ask the spirit realm, show me what to bring into this journey or what needs to help. And everybody is uniquely different. 
this one may want this this one may need this crystal this one may need this 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 frequency this drum beat and I've had people never in their life have ever taken a shamanic journey and I've talked to them in the and with no drugs no anything just the just the drumming just the, the the notes of the bowl just something else here and there they end up on a, a journey and I'll explain this on a, a, another video but their brain waves were being altered they wanted to go into this journey for a specific pers purpose they had in their mind I want to go to this journey I want this to happen went into the journey come back out we talked about it and in this journey we she described what she's seen I know what I seen compared this this and this and she seen something and I won't get into it the exact what but not only did she see the one being or the one thing but she seen two of them I was a little perplexed and there's a saying, a wise man seeks the counsel of many, so I had to figure out and ask and figure out what, what did this mean? What did it mean? It didn't come to me. Well, this individual had been seeing a psychiatrist on medication. What she's seen was a symbol, symbolic gesture in the spirit world of committing suicide, not just one of them, but two. She was withholding information from the psychologist, sometimes outright lying, but in one session found out she wanted to commit suicide with no drugs, just a drum and some crystals. She did not in no way know what them symbols meant, so she didn't make it up. I didn't fully understand it. So the chances of that happening, and she admitted that's what she wanted to do. We talked and we talked and we talked. She's working at things. And what I'm trying to tell you is people are out there walking around in an altered state of consciousness with their antennas up. And some people say, well, I was born with ADHD. I was born with this. I was born with that. I'm not saying they're not. My question was, why? Why? When I was a kid, there was only two radio or two or three uh, TV stations, a few radio stations, a couple airplanes. Right now, sitting here, I got the Wi Fi going through me, cell phones. There might be an airplane up there. Uh, think of how many waves are going through our body right now. My question is, are they altering the wavelengths and the frequencies in the brain, which would open up different things or close different things? Just a question. So now people go to get prescribed medicines to straighten their brain waves out, which are being messed up by other things. That's just a question, a theory. But I've seen time and time again and like I said people say well I was born with this well if you think about it the mother carried the child in the womb and they and they say cigarette smoking or alcohol can cause birth defects but what brain wave frequencies which are unique to each individual do they all these frequencies that are going through our body alter these are just points to ponder. This is what I think about. Stuff like that. People say, well, if I wear a crystal, it'll negate the negative energies that is coming around me. Now, I've done some experiments with crystals. I made a crystal grid. I'll probably do some videos on that. With all the negativity or the radio... I mean, how many satellites? I could have Google Satellite right now mapping my backyard and I don't know about it 
how much radio waves, microwaves, and I'm not being, this is a question. I'd have to live in a crystal house three feet thick to keep all the radio waves out. And that's the dilemma for, I'm going to say, shamanic practices, people that alter their state of consciousness. There's licensed people that do a uh, big thing as psychedelics and this and that, and they swear by it. I don't know anything about that. I just look back at it as a logical thing. In my practice, I don't use it. Don't even recommend it. And these are just things I think about. You know. Like I said, if you're on these medications, don't get off of them. I've worked with individuals that were on them. If you start changing their way of thinking, taking responsibility for what they've done, next thing you know, they're on the same medication, but they're hearing voices. Why? Because you changed their way of thinking, and that medication is, is keeping their brain waves at the same length and doing this, so they end up cutting the dose in half, going down, and sooner or later they may not need them. But once again, don't, don't stop. I'm speaking from personal experience, and, and if you think about what I'm talking about and contemplate it, and, and that's all I want to do is open the doors, open the pathways, show you the force. We've been given all these pills and all this stuff. I'm sitting here. I'm not on any medication, no heart medication, no blood medication, no diabetes, no nothing. I take nothing. I haven't ever taken any of that. I went to get a checkup, and the doctor looked at me and says, oh, we're going to put you on a stress test. You're a prime candidate for a heart attack. And I'm saying, well, why? My blood pressure is low. My heart beats anywhere from 58 to 60. Well, you, you know, that's people like you, they just out and die. So they gave me a stress test. I have learned over the years of stuff, you know, when you're working, this is from the military and exercise, and if you breathe properly, you can get deep lung full, let it out, deep lung full, let it out, you actually get more oxygen and less, they get rid of more carbon dioxide than if you're standing there going, <laughs> okay, got on that treadmill and I'm going like this, and they wanted to get my heart rate up I think I don't quote me I think it was 160 beats a minute or something they wanted to get it up there and I was on there for a long long time and I could get my heart beat up that fast my breathing was <sighs> now I, um, my knees and ankles are bad that's from physical work not that my body's way out of whack it's just I beat my body up and I can't expect the cosmos to fix something that I keep beating up. Well, the lady said, you're doing better than a 20-year-old. And she said, I got to crank it up. we got to get your heartbeat up like that. And I think I was on there for a half hour or more. My heartbeat still wasn't getting up. She cranked it up, and I'm going like this, and I'm talking to her. I'm saying, we're going to have to stop. Not that I can't do it. My knees are about ready to give out. My ankles are locking up. She slowed it down. I sit down. Breathe. And she said, okay, there's, you know, she'll ship the results over. A couple weeks later, I went back to the doctor. He sat there, and I'll never forget it. He says, let's see what these tests show. He opened it up, and he looked at it and looked at me. He actually didn't know what to say. You know. So I'm here to tell you, you know, that try and eat the best you can. Do that. If you balance your body, I still got, you know, issues. I'm not saying major ones. I still got things. But if you try and listen to your body and balance your body out, and that's why we go to, in a shamanic practice, altered states of consciousness. And I had an individual 
they've never been on a shamanic journey before, wanted to go. They were on, they had some drug problems. And in order to get them off this one drug, they put them on another drug that alters their mind. Took them on a shamanic journey, and for whatever reason, that was probably one of the better ones I did. That individual knew everything, seen everything, remembered everything, you know. That drug just happened at that time to maybe balance her out so she could communicate with her soul. That's a unique experience. That's just some things to think about. Uh, I, I didn't, I, like I said, I want to apologize. I didn't get to go on live. I didn't understand at all. Um, I have to do some more research on that. I don't have a high paid tech or anything like that. It's just me figuring this out. I'd like to go live so we could interact and maybe ask some questions. But that's something to think about. And, and like I said, is it harmful or helpful? It's very helpful if used in the right context. But today, from my point of view, where I'm setting, there's many people walking around in altered states of consciousness that are opening themselves up to the spirit realms, to the negative. And they don't even know they're doing it. And then they come to me and say, oh, they, they, this is happening, this is happening. Is it, ha is it happening spiritually? Or is it just they got their antenna up and it's looping in their head? It's a lot to think about from my aspect. And I'm not putting anybody down. I've had people come to me and say they are walking around, they see demons all over the place. And I'm, you know, I bet you do, because what? I've been seeing a therapist for five years and he's got me on this medication and they're not getting it dialed in. Well, you know, and I'm not saying that. And if you're on medication, don't stop because that's, that, that, that's that, I'm not telling you to stop. You need to stay on it. But medication it's in black and white right there. Everybody's, everyone's brain waves in length, and there's too much data out there for them to even ana analyze what is, I guess, what's normal. Because there isn't a normal. My brain waves are different than somebody else's. But they're given pills, take 500 milligrams of this three times a day, to everybody across the board. And they can't seem to get a handle on why people are walking around in psychosis mode and this and that. Never just questions to think about. That's the type of things I think about sometimes. And I, I'm not putting anybody down. A lot of people don't understand that. Or they don't want, and that's where coming to me, I'm, you know, we got to fix the problem. The problem isn't the pill. The problem is what the reason why you need to take these. So, make it a little short one. That's something for you to think about. I'm going to be leaving a link to my business sites. If you want to get in touch with me, feel free to click on them and get to them. And I just hope this video gets you thinking. Again, thank you. I apologize. I'm not the professional, I guess, but I'm here. I want to thank you. If you like this, share it. Hit the like button like everybody says. I just want to get this stuff out there one way or another. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.